Hey there, it's me Crystal and today I'm going to do some mini book reviews and then I have an announcement to make about my book that's coming out in November. So first up, I'm going to talk about this fairy tale retelling um, trilogy, novelette trilogies. As you can see, they're very, very short. Also, I just realized that this says Rose Red on the back. And I swear I read the back of this before I read this, so I don't know why I was surprised that it was Rose Red. Okay, so this is season one, and I don't know how many seasons there are. I know there are at least four or five. And as far as I know, they're all going to be three parts and super short like this one. So basically, according to the back, um, what has happened is that there are a lot of authors uh, doing fairy tale retellings right now, and that is throwing all the fairy tale worlds into disarray. So this one is from the point of view of Rose Red, sister of Snow White, and she desperately wants to have children, and she's like in her mid-30s, and so she feels like time is running out, and so she starts to dabble into some black magic, and she thinks that's what's causing the problems to arise, but as they go in search of a fix, they realize that all the fairy tale kingdoms are having problems. So I gave all of these uh, four stars. I thought they were really interesting, and they're kind of like in the spirit of like the Grimm's fairy tale. They're um, like dark and whimsical, but they're not like super dark. But the reason why I gave them four stars instead of five is for one thing, they all end on the cliffhanger, uh, including the third one, which I was not expecting. I'm not a fan of cliffhangers. Like, I can deal with them if the book is going to be wrapped up sometime soon. I could kind of tell, like, when I was reaching the end of the third one, that it was not going to be over <laughs> in that book because. And the, and the reason why that annoyed me is because I feel like each of these books are going to be from a different uh, princess's point of view. And they're going to have characters that are going to be, like, intertwined throughout the whole series. But, like, I kind of wanted the story to wrap up. And so it's kind of like it's not as satisfying because I didn't really get an ending. And in order for me to get an ending to this story, I have to read, like... 12 or 15 or 20 more of these things. I don't know how many there are. Also, another reason I took a star off is because it's like, it is really interesting, but the writing is like a little, little clunky, for lack of a better word. Like, the sentences are very clunky, and some of them are hard to read. Like, there's a lot of words in a lot of these sentences. Okay, if you have the occasional, like, clunky sentence or the occasional sentence that doesn't make sense, like, that that happens. It's totally fine. You make the best sense of it as you can and move on. But there was just a lot. I'm kind of on the fence about if I'm going to read the rest of them. Because, like I said, there are at least five seasons of three books and I'm not crazy about that and I'm not crazy about all the cliffhangers and I'm not crazy about all the long sentences but I feel like if people want a really quick read and that's something that's a fairy tale retelling that's very traditional like it has a historical setting and you know the way they talk to each other is very antiquated they're fun and they're quick and like I said it was very interesting so next I'm going to talk about Giant Days. I have Volume 1 and Volume 2. So this is a contemporary storyline uh, following these three friends at university and it's set in England somewhere. So you can see some of the artwork here. It has a very fun um, laid back kind of comedic vibe. So I also gave these four stars and the reason why is because the storyline is just kind of disjointed. Like it's like it's separated into chapters and each chapter it's like telling a story and the stories um, are not necessarily related to one another so it's just it's kind of like a day in the life of these college kids. I also feel like I don't get some of the jokes because it's set in England and so some of the things they say I'm like I feel like it's kind of like London slang you know like there is a scene in volume 2 um, where they went to this nightclub and they're looking for this character. The other two characters are looking for this one. And she says, oh, did you check the chill out room? And she says, yeah, there are a bunch of people and they're passing out. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and like, I was on the couch and it was really comfortable. And I had to get up and look up passing out because it was bothering me. Um, I don't know how many volumes of these there are, but I am going to pick up volume three because they're very fun and they're relaxing and I do like graphic novels. So next up I have Bite Somebody and Bite Somebody Else by Sarah Dobie Bauer. 
So both of these books are vampire romance comedies. So this first one is about Cecilia and she is a newly turned vampire and she was kind of dumpy before and kind of boring and so instead of being like this glamorous vampire she is still dumpy and boring and so she gets this new neighbor and she's like obsessed with him and her friend Imogene is like just bite somebody right like just bite him and like get it over with because Cecilia has not actually bitten a human before so she's been drinking all of her blood out of bags. So I gave this five stars because it was very nostalgic and it was funny and it like it took itself seriously but not seriously at the same time and Cecilia is a riot and Imogene is a riot and Ian is hilarious and I don't read a lot of like contemporary based romance books because like it just kind of gets on my nerves like they get together and then they fight and then you know they're going to end up back together and so I just feel like it's a waste of my time when they're fighting but that didn't really happen in this. Obviously there were other problems um, that were fun and kind of unexpected and there was an interesting twist at the end that I thought was really fun but basically like this was nostalgic and it was hilarious and there's this line in here where uh, she works the night shift at a gas station and she takes her bike there and so she goes down to her bike and it's like one of the tires is flat and so Ian, her neighbor, she finally goes up to talk to him to ask if he has um, like a pump for her tire and so he comes up there and he's pumping the tire up and she's wearing her happy gas apron and he's like, oh the night shift, huh? I was trying to think you were a vampire and I had to put the book down because I was laughing for like five minutes and if you're into vampires and have been for a long time like I have, like that's just really funny. Yeah, so even though the book is part of a duology, they do both stand alone. And so the second book, it carries on like a, a subplot from the first book. But the second book is told from the point of view of Imogen. So this is Imogen with the purple hair. She is very, very much into the 80s. And therein lies part of my problem with this book. So I gave this four stars. I wanted to give it five stars because it was very entertaining and I love the author and I love like that world that she created with her vampires there in southern Florida. So basically the main difference is, is that uh, the first book is from Cecilia's point of view and this book is from Imogen's point of view and Imogen is insane. Um, while she was super fun in the first book, like being in her head in this book there were times where I was like really annoyed <laughs> with her. And also, like I said about the first book, how like, they didn't get into that stereotypical fight, um, that did happen in this book. Um, also, like it wasn't as funny as the first book, I guess maybe because Cecilia was so odd and Ian was so odd. And Imogene, she is different, but she isn't like weird like the same kind of way that like Cecilia and Ian are weird. Overall, I thought it was really good. The world is really rich, like the colors and the smells and the and the sounds, like everything's very immersive. And the love interest in Bite Somebody Else was this guy named Nicholas, and he was really fun and mysterious. And he had a very interesting storyline, a very interesting personality, and I liked him a lot. And another thing that kind of bothered me, and this is, again, it's kind of a personal thing, kind of like the whole couple gets in a fight thing like I feel like that's a personal thing like another thing that was kind of a personal thing was Imogene had like this experience in her past where her heart got broken at some point okay and now this is a spoiler but I'm gonna go ahead and say it because like it bothered me so much I put the book down for a week so she gets her heart broken by a ferret okay and I'm not joking like she Okay, and she's a vampire, and she's been a vampire for like 30 years, and so she's been walking around not trusting anybody for 30 years because her ferret ran away, and it's kind of like, maybe it's because I had a ferret, and my ferret ran away, like, I don't, I don't really know what happened, and I don't know if she ran away and so much as she just got out and got lost somewhere, and I'm like, they're animals, and, you know, she... Ferrets are very playful kind of animals too and it was sad when my ferret ran away but I didn't take it personally, you know, 
and I guess it was supposed to be funny. Like, I did not think that that was funny. Like, I was really, really annoyed. I thought she had, like, some real actual, like, pain, and it was a ferret. And I know it's a comedy, but it's like, just because you're in a comedy doesn't mean you can't have something real. And also, like I said, like, the overall tone of Imogene's story wasn't as funny as Cecilia's. Like, I don't think I laughed very much. And honestly, like, I don't really remember laughing at all. There were some things that were amusing, but I don't remember, like, laughing, you know? But ultimately, that is still not the reason why I took a star off. I gave it four stars solely because there were so many 80s pop culture references. I was expecting some because there were some and Bites and Buddy. But I feel like they were kind of limited to like pretty woman, you know, specific pop culture references. Whereas in Imogene's story, there was all the 80s pop culture references. And I'm thinking too, like, even if they had been pop culture references that I got, I... I hate pop culture references, and I'm gonna make a video about this later, but like literally my number one pet peeve with books is pop culture references. I will put a book down for that faster than I would put a book down for anything, including like bottom of the barrel kind of bad writing, you know? Even if I get the pop culture references, they are always distracting to me because it always takes me out of the story. It was just very irritating, but like I said, I liked the book and I liked Nicholas, and even though imaging was getting on my nerves, I did want to know what was happening. And the plot was very interesting and it was fun. Um, not as fun as the first one, but it was still fun. And I still, like, loved the book enough that I was, I did pick it back up and finish it. Because I wanted to know what was going to happen. But really, like, I would recommend, um, all, everything I talked about in this video. Because it is all fun, depending on your taste. I don't like those kind of vampires that are, like, whiny all the time. You know, it's kind of like I, I remember when I was reading the interview with the vampire and it's like, I love Lestat and he was always like trying to shake Louie. And it's just like, can, can you just enjoy being a vampire for one day in your life? Oh my gosh. Like the Bites and Buddy series, it just reminded me of like, you know, those old school kind of vampire movies and, and like Buffy where you have vampires that loved being vampires, you know, and it was just, it was just a lot of fun. And you need that. You need fun. So that's gonna wrap up my mini reviews. Hopefully I didn't go on too long. I want to do a mini review for How to Hang a Witch when I finish that and I'm so close to the end and having a good time. I'm just really slow about reading books sometimes. <laughs> So, announcement time, speaking of retellings, my Swan Lake retelling, Winter Siren, is coming out November 1st of this year, and the cover reveal is uh, next Wednesday, September 6th. So, if I can figure out how to make, like, a picture-in-picture, -picture, like, over to the side, I want to do, like, a video cover reveal. Yeah, so that video will be going up next Wednesday, and then after next Wednesday, I will be back to posting videos on Mondays. Okay, so I cannot wait to like show it everywhere. The cover is gorgeous. And I also have some teasers that are gorgeous that I can't wait to spread everywhere. So if you're not following me on Instagram, um, the link is in the description box. And I will be putting my cover on Instagram and on my blog. And I'm also going to be running a giveaway for the book starting September 13th. So if you want, you can add the book so you know when the giveaway is live and you know when the book is live. And anyway, I'm so excited. So that is all I'm going to talk about today. And I will see you guys next Wednesday for the cover reveal. Bye.